Good morning, Paolo. Thanks Good for having morning. us at Prima Additive. Um, so would you mind giving us a little introduction of uh, what Prima Additive do and what you've got on the boat? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Prima Additive is very new in this market of the additive manufacturing. We produce a, a laser system for metal 3D printing and uh, practically we are investing in both technology, direct energy deposition and uh, uh, powder bed diffusion machine. Now uh, we are bringing here inside this, uh, this market our experience in making a laser system for material processing. Mm. We are a company, we are part of a company that is Prima Industria. Prima Industria uh, is uh, working on the laser system since uh, 40 years ago. We have a very strong background and uh, joining also a, a Innovative startup, 3D new technologies. We are developing a very interesting concept of new machine, like this one or the other that you can see later. So my name is Maddie Guillory. I'm the CFO at Titan Robotics, and at Titan, we are a production additive manufacturing solutions provider. So we build medium to large format 3D printers that use pellet or granule extrusion, as well as some hybrid technologies. So pellet and filament extrusion on the same machine, pellet and pellet extrusion on the same machine, or pellet and spindle, which is additive and subtractive. And what we're really focused on is end use and production parts, molds, patterns, tooling, jigs, fixtures, things like that, using low cost, feedstock, which is the granules, as well as the high performance material, so you really get the part performance out of what you are making. And then finally, we have a really repeatable industrial system. We have CNC controls, we have servos on all axes. This is truly a production-ready, lights-out manufacturing system. Yeah, um, I'm Renette Youssef. I'm the CMO, so I run marketing at Velo3D. Um, and Velo3D is an additive manufacturing technology company, so we provide an end-to-end -end solution, all 3D metal printed, um, and we're based in Campbell, California. So I'm a senior engineer, material engineer at, uh, at Rico, Rico 3D. So Rico is, uh, for most people know Rico for the, the 2D printing business, and now we are expanding in the, in the 3D printing business since, uh, since 2015. So we, we do a wide range of uh, things. What we are showcasing here uh, this year is mainly the, uh, our development uh, with uh, metal binder jetting technology for printing uh, printing aluminium uh, aluminium parts that you can see that you can see here. Uh, then we we got uh, on that side of the of the um, of the booth we got the. Um, the printing part service, so we print polymer parts with different uh, different technology, SLS, FDM, multi-jet fusion, different material, polypropylene, nylon 12, and we also recently introduced a composite, uh, a composite technology, the CBAM technology, which produced very very nice part with high strength and uh, very high performance. Uh, so yeah, Alpatec started in 2012 as a uh, joint uh, development uh, project of ECN and Formatec. Uh, Formatech being a company active in ceramic injection molding uh, for quite some years already, currently already 25 years. And in 2012 we started looking at other ways of shaping materials, uh, including 3D uh, printing. Uh, we then developed our own uh, printing machine, which is the, the Opatech uh, system, because we couldn't really find in the market a system which is, let's say, uh, capable to handle a broad range of materials, both ceramic and metals, and also we want to have a system with a relatively high uh, production speed. Sandvik, uh additive or the division that we belong to here is, is we are we are a metal powder producer we have a wide range of, of metal powders on our program probably the widest range out there everything from aluminum copper alloys to stainless steel tool steels to uh, nickel alloys and, and titanium so it's a really wide area for additive uh, that we have but we are also doing uh, print services uh, and that's the unit that I'm operating in in Sunvik in Sweden developing processes for new materials with, with certain application and niches that we have on the program. What sort of things have you brought to Formlex with you this year? Yeah, so um, we actually have a new piece that we bought here. It's but, um, printed on our one MC, so it's a one meter printed to, um, printer. It's a rocket engine, it's just under a meter high, um, so it's new. And we have some of our really famous pieces. This is a gas turbine. We cut it in half so people can see that we don't have support. So we, we print without supports, and um, so we like to show some things like that. Um, this is also a new piece, it's a manifold in scan alloy. So what is unique about our system is that we work with a polymer foil. 
Uh, this uh, polymer uh, foil is uh, uh, bringing a thin layer of slurry into the printing area, which is here in the middle. So we put the slurry in the reservoir and we are tape casting a, a thin layer of slurry to the printing area. Uh, then with help of uh, UV uh, illumination, we are curing a layer and adding that to the part. And we do that layer after layer until the part is finished. Uh, all the material which is not used in the current layer is here collected and pumped back to the initial reservoir. So one of the benefits is that the waste is virtually zero. So that means we can print with uh, ceramic and also precious materials. Uh, we can print as well with, uh, with uh, silver or other uh, metals. Uh, for metals we have a special uh, additional device which we call the metal add-on. As you can imagine, metal particles are very heavy, so they tend to, uh, to sediment. And with help of this system, which keeps the material in motion all the time, uh, we can print as well metals and even, let's say, heavy uh, metals. We brought some sample parts here for being part of the U.S. Pavilion. And so some of the parts that we have on display are end-use production parts, um, some, some ducts made out of different materials. This is Aquasis 120, which is a soluble material, often used in uh, soluble support um, because it dissolves in warm water. But this application is actually a soluble core, so you would lay up carbon fiber or some other substrate around it and then dissolve it away and you're left with your final part. Um, this is carbon fiber Ultem, this is carbon fiber polypropylene, so we have a lot of different materials. We also have a glass fiber uh, polycarbonate material as well for a thermoforming mold. And so this mold right off the printer was used in a thermoforming process and we have the actual formed part right here to, to show how great of an application this is for medium to large format pellet extrusion 3D printing. Cool. Yeah, so here we got some, uh, some composite parts made with uh, composite-based additive manufacturing technology, which is a technology that we are developing with, uh, working in collaboration with, uh, with Impossible Object. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a sheet lamination, uh, lamination process. So giving parts with, with, uh, with very high strength, uh, good, uh, good durability, very high performance. We can use uh, uh, either carbon fiber sheet or glass fiber sheet combined with uh, either nylon 12 or peak. Uh, materials, so very very high performance uh, high performance polymer polymers for demanding application or for areas where you need to uh, lightweight uh, uh, your parts. Uh, so that's a, re a really really interesting technology for for this type of application. This machine is a powder bed diffusion machine that could be equipped with a different laser system, but also different wavelength, maybe with the infrared laser and green laser uh, to work. Uh, uh, with a proper way, with a proper wavelength, uh, different material. Uh, for instance, uh, pure copper or uh, copper alloys, gold, uh, silver, uh, aluminum with green laser, and the other, uh, no, with infrared laser. So you can select the laser you prefer uh, no, for the application, but uh, you have also different uh, innovative features on the numeric control and uh, real real time features that allow you to perform better the application on this kind of machine. This machine could be equipped also for with the monitoring sensors, and uh, you can exchange data uh, between the machine and uh, NRP or the a cloud through the, the IoT gate. Uh, this is our top-of-the-line uh, machine, so it has the biggest uh, build platform. Uh, currently we can uh, print up to uh, 26 centimeters by 22 centimeters by 8 or 50 centimeters, which is quite uh, revolutionary for this DLP uh, process. Uh, the machine has the same technology as the smaller Optoflex uh, 130, uh, which means it can process both uh, ceramics and uh, metals on one and the same uh, machine. Uh, what is important is that the machine is totally open with all the parameters, uh, meaning you can optimize the parameters for, uh, for our materials, but you are also open to uh, have your own materials on the machine. So this is a great example. This is a foundry pattern. It's a pump pattern. And um, because of, you can see actually in the video as we go through, we have a cutting tool on the machine, but this was printed and machined, we call it in situ. So as it's building up, we're machining it. And the chamber is heated, so this is carbon fiber ABS that we're printing with. So we would print a section here, and once it reaches a certain point, it switches over to the milling process. and comes back and mills this surface. And then it prints another section, mills it, and so on and so forth. And we've built parts that are, are you know, a meter tall in, in doing that process. 
And what you can see here with this part is we wanted to demonstrate how it works, which is you over extrude. So you have to have enough material over here to cut down into the part and still have your solid part. So that's why this side looks rough and this side looks finished, but this is right off the machine. I mean, this is a smooth finish. And um, you could even go further and do, um, you know, a coating. A lot of times in foundry, they'll use a foundry pattern paint or something like that. And, and that's your tool and it doesn't require any manual labor. And that's really key for uh, customers like foundries, that they have a pattern right off the printer ready to go. Yes, yes, yes. This machine is a, a machine platform made by Prima Industria. Uh, it's a very uh, stable machine, but uh, uh, equipped with a direct energy deposition kit uh, could make the difference uh, in the additive manufacturing market. Also because we are introducing uh, during this ex exhibition our uh, patent, uh, patented solution that is uh, the Real DD, that we branded as a Real DD. Real is a cro an acronym, it means uh, no, real-time adjustment of the laser beam for direct energy deposition. It means that uh, with this machine you, are, you can use this machine not just to recoat, uh, to make some cladding, you can use it also to build uh, uh, features on existing part, you can use it for repairing. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the main point is that uh, we are improving the quality of this process because with the real DD you can uh, improve uh, the deposition rate but uh, having a very good surface quality for this kind of process. Oh, these are all parts made in, in, in Superduplex and of course we, we, we atomize the powders that we use in, in the plants that we have both in Sweden and in, in the UK then. But Superduplex are really a great design for severe corrosion uh, at the environments, especially then seawater. Mm. So this is something that is really interesting for offshore industries, oil and gas, um, but also marine then, or, or, or even wind farms which are using uh, these type of grades. So we are developing the process uh, and we are scaling it up now to, to be able to do larger parts then. Uh, so that's what we're doing at present. And important here is also that you really need to master the heat treatment aftermath because the super duplex is the 50 50 austenite ferritic grade and you really want to have good the, the right microstructure to get the best uh, corrosion resistance so uh these bladed discs are challenging to print because of the need for support material all along the low angle sections of the blade with Velotit technology, we only need to put a small amount of support along the leading edge, which is very easily removed, and after that point, the low angle process takes over, not support. So the whole blade is very uniform and smooth, doesn't need a lot of post-processing or support removal. So tell me a little bit about your portfolio. So um, where are we now and what's the plan for over the next year or two? Oh, there's always plans for the future. <laughs> so. Um, in May is when we released the additive and subtractive system. It's called the Atlas HS. Um, so it has pellet extrusion and the spindle cutting tool so that you can print a part in the machine and uh, then you can machine it. So this is a great example right here. This is an example of a sheet metal forming tool. And this material was custom developed. It's great for this application. It came in pellet form, so it's affordable. And we printed it very quickly, uh, so near net, so it's over extruded essentially. And then we come back and we machine the part down to have a really smooth surface and a really accurate um, finish on there. And then that is the part that's used for the sheet metal forming tool. So that's one application that we um, have been working on and the Atlas HS with the additive and subtractive system recently come out this year. And then we do have some new systems that we're working on that unfortunately I can't really talk about, uh, but we are gonna have some new announcements coming out next year and we're really excited about those as well. Again, everything that we do is focused on production. Next year will be a very important year for Prima Additive. Uh, since uh, we probably will become a, some uh, uh, dedicated uh, legal entity that will be participated also pro, from third party, not only from Prima. So we have a, our development plan that uh, will become very interesting. Also because we are going to develop some very important multi optics platform for powder bed fusion machines. The industry as a whole is moving forward in a general sense. Mm. Every once in a while you have a step function change where somebody comes out and does something revolutionary. I like to hope to think that we are that step function. 